Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Youth Hour. My name is Yaw Rahman. Now today's topic of discussion is about drug abuse and drug addiction. Drug is a cancer in our society. It affects millions, billions globally. Our society has many challenges in dealing with drugs. As our viewers at home will know, drug influences many and impacts a lot. We have families that are ruined by the influence of drugs. All it takes is for one member of the family to get addicted and that can have a devastating effect on other family members. There are drug related issues that lead to families breaking up, marriages breaking up, children being taken to foster homes, foster care, because parents are not in a position where they can look after their children. So why is it, despite all these challenges, despite all these uh, challenges to our community, to the family, why is it that drug addiction is still on the rise? More specifically, why is it that more and more youths are taking drugs? Is it because it's more fashionable now? Is it because it's become more widely available? Is it because it's much cheaper than it used to be? Now in today's show we will discuss in depth about drug abuse and drug misuse amongst the youth in particular. In the first segment we will be speaking to a youth who will give us the perspective from a youth and how it has impacted his life growing up, drugs around him, amongst his family, his friends and what his perception of drugs is. In the second segment of the show we will have experts, nafas, people who are dealing with drugs on a day-to-day -day basis giving solutions to our youth who will come on the show and speak to us about their social ill. And then at the end of the show we will give suggestions and treatments on how we can overcome drugs. From an Islamic perspective any intoxicant, as we learn from our Prophet any intoxicant is disallowed in Islam. Anything that leads to someone losing a sense of themselves is not allowed. Yet with such strong teachings and con continuous reminders in Quran as well, why is it that once again we are falling victim to this cancer which is ruining our community and society? As we are talking Manche ganja drugs can happen. It is a very bad thing. It is a family friend, a 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 Tackle for Tamfari. I'm the Sai Asku, I'm the Mawafe Zehundra, I'm the Bible, I'm the Guruka, studio discussion involved Roka, I'm the Hoka, I'm the Zanoni Manus Zekta Nira, Tara Namu Lokana, I'm the Hoka, Ikta Tara Kila effect horse, Tara family Kila effect horse, Arafna Hoka, I'm the Kila Ikta community, Hishabi, I'm the Kila Ikta tackle for Tamfari. Now, as always, uh, we want to hear from you. This show is all about the youth, okay? I want you to phone and tell us what your views are about drugs, okay? Um, I don't want you to mention people, but I want you to tell me, have you c experienced in some way, somehow your life's been impacted, okay? Maybe a friend, maybe a family member, whoever it may be, without mentioning names, how that's affected you? What was your reaction? What was your feeling? Do call us on the studio and we can and get involved with the discussion. Also, at the end of the show, as every week, we want to inspire the youth, the watching audience at home. I want you to email me at ikra, youthhour at ikra.tv and tell me about something inspirational that you've done, that you can inspire those who are watching at home. Whether it be a brilliant result in your exams, you might have signed up for a charity organization, or you might have done something which you've never done before, you might have gone uh, mountain climbing, something that was special to you that made you do go out of your comfort zone. I want to know about that and I want you to share it with me so that I can share it with the watching audience and inspire them as well. And if you email me, I'll read it out on the show. And obviously, as we do every week, please phone in and join in with the discussion. Now, my first guest is Tanvir Raza. How are you, Tanvir? Yeah, I'm, I'm great, thank okay. you. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Tanvir, tell us a bit about yourself. What is it that you're doing at the moment? 
Uh, well, um, my name is uh, Tanvir Raza. I'm 19 years old. Okay, Masha. And um, I finished my A-levels last year. Yeah. I managed to get good enough grades to get into medicine. Alhamdulillah. So for the past year, I've been studying a lot, awful hard for my exams. And <laughs> okay. So, so yeah. you can give us, uh, inshallah, a medical, semi-medical perspective as well as the youth. <laughs> uh, I guess I don't have that much experience, but I'll try and uh, input as much as I can, I okay, guess. Okay, brilliant. So. We're obviously discussing um, a very serious topic. Now, before we discuss a very serious topic, I want you to tell me something you've done, which is, in, which was, which could inspire the watching audience at home. Something that you've done recently, okay. maybe last year, uh, a week ago, a month back. All right, sure. Um, well, I would say, even though I've mentioned it before, I would say that getting into medicine has got to be one of my biggest achievements because. Oh, sure. Um, I come from uh, Ta Hamlets, which is uh, one of the more deprived boroughs mm. uh, for the youth. And um, I also uh, attended one of the schools that's on a list of underachieving schools. Mm. And so to get the grades that I needed, I needed to put in extra, a lot of hard work, a lot mm. of independent study. And I had to put my blood, sweat and tears into my mm. studying so I can get the grades to enter medicine. And once I got my results to confirm that I was in medical school, I think that was one of my proudest, most um, hard fought for achievements, I guess. So, so all the hard work, the blood, sweat and tears, it paid off at the end and I guess uh, and I guess that's the message to our watching uh, our youth who are watching today definitely okay don't give up give it your all and inshallah it'll be worth the effort yeah exactly brilliant now the topic for today is about drug addiction and with uh, the title being uh, need for weed okay um, now how what, what why do you think why do you think and what is it that makes someone look into drugs or even consider taking drugs? The, the way I see is I think that it, it, it begins with a disinterest in sports and a disinterest in video games and, and other such pastimes. You, mm. th there's a, but there's more of an interest. It's because I think it's because maybe drugs are more accessible than video games and sports for these children. I think uh, drugs are more easily available. And also, once uh, there's also that beginning step, that beginning, that first time you take the drug, I think that leads to just a slippery slope downwards mm. and it leads to addiction and once you're in a, once you've taken that first hit you just seem to not get enough you just sure. can't get enough of that why do you, why do you think our youth resort to drugs what is it that's making someone okay do something that they know is illegal and also has a damaging effect on their health what could lead an individual a young person to even consider drugs? Well, the whole point of the whole um, idea, concept of narcotic drugs, illegal drugs, they, um, they, they give the individual like, a sense of uh, a satiety, a sense of um, euphoria, happiness. Okay. You know, they a get high. To a high, a high, you could yeah, say. It's sure. called a high. And it, it kind of gets them into a different world, a world away from their troubles, mm. a world where nothing matters. You could do anything. And this, this, this high, this feeling, this happy, feeling of happiness just seems to, uh, it's, it's, it's very addictive. And I think th you get, and the fa that first hit it comes from the pressures I guess pressures from grades perhaps yeah. pressures from parents uh, pressures from uh, school gen general school life relationships mm. I think it's not necessarily just one factor that leads to taking drugs I think it's a combination of many many factors that lead to the individual going through stress mm. and the only way that, that the only uh, stress reliever that the individual sees is drugs and that's where it begins in my opinion sure now obviously some people might argue that it's the stress that comes with it do you think there are also people out there who do it as something that you know they start, sometimes you have friends who egg their friends on okay yes. they try and challenge them and almost to say that look I, I'm man enough if you want to call that a woman enough to try it out yeah. or almost like a challenge do you think there's also uh, reasons such as that for someone Definitely to peer pressure plays a huge factor in crime rates and drug and uh, the taking of drugs I 100% I agree with that I think it's um, it's more so if like if there's a group of uh, friends taking drugs mm. and you're the only one not taking drugs, there's a, there's a bit of social in, uh, exclusion. Yeah. The, the the person, the individual may feel excluded if he doesn't take if he doesn't um, take part in the drug mm. taking, if he doesn't uh, get himself involved. In fact, it may come to a point where his friends may not want to be his friends or may uh, uh, ca call him names or and such just because he's not taking the drugs. Mm. So that there is uh, this overwhelming sense of pressure mm. that really uh, pushes the kids towards these drugs. I'd say. Yeah. So I think. I guess what we're saying is, you know, sometimes the social, and it's a social, almost a social norm, a social uh, practice within certain groups, communities, where you are almost expected to take it. Yes. Uh, if yeah, you, if you're hanging around with, say, certain groups of friends, possibly, Definitely. where the expectation is, this is what we do. Okay. Um, now, do you think, 
you you're obviously mashallah now at university yeah. have you yourself seen people at the campus where you're based okay who are taking drugs or who might have taken drugs um personally in my in in my campus in my university i haven't seen such uh, yet i've seen mainly a lot of alcohol being thrown uh, sure. thrown about which is a type of drug but not the not necessarily marijuana sure. and cocaine sure. and such maybe i think maybe that's because university people might mature a little bit more okay. however it's can like i come back to that yes. just hold uh, hold that thought for a second we've got a caller on the Okay, uh, we'll come back to the caller. So you were saying on the campus, on the campus, uh, campus, you've got people who don't take it as much as maybe in other places. Right. Or, yeah. Or, or would you argue that maybe it's not as uh, openly practiced in university campuses because you do hear a lot of people who go to university and they do take drugs. Yes. Because yes. sometimes, especially students who live away from home, it's almost like that freedom. The extra sense of freedom. Yeah. You can get away with anything without yeah, the parents yeah, yeah, overlooking yeah, you. Exactly. Yeah. So would. You, all right, so maybe not on the uh, campus necessarily, but do you hear conversations where people are talking about it in a very kind of casual manner? Um, uh, personally, I, um, I, don't, I haven't uh, heard any such conversations, okay. but I'm sure they do take place uh, in the, as I've, I've seen, I live in uh, dorms myself, and mm. I've seen uh, the party life is, mm. is a huge craze at university, and it's, it's, it's obvious that there will be such conversations in such an environment. Mm. Um, however, I do think that uh, there is a lot more uh, of concealment of the drugs. There's a lot more, it's a lot more clever how they conceal the, the uh, drug taking and whatnot sure. in u university. However, I would say while I was at sixth form and secondary school, however, uh, a very immature stage in one's childhood, I would say that people were not so uh, careful to conceal their activity and it was like mm. a dr the taking of drugs uh, marijuana cocaine it was it was bl it was blatant it was so obvious it was, it was social widespread. status it was almost like if someone's taking drugs then you know with their reputation was much higher than someone who didn't they almost you added, that in a way. added to their rep um, in terms of so what about schools and colleges then so would you say, so we've spoken about the fact that some people do, it, it's, it's uh, discussed more openly, it's almost like if they do it, it it's seen as something that uh, you know, uh, impacts them in a positive way in terms of their reputation. What about in schools and colleges? Are there people, are there a lot of youths who are taking drugs, do you think? I, I, I certainly do think so because what with like I said uh, when you're when you're 15 16 years old and you don't have much of an interest in in, in uh, education mm -hmm. uh, maybe because you've got you've had a few tests that didn't go so well so the child may have given up on education and they might find themselves having a lot more fun because at 15 16 years old and 14 years old even it's all about having fun isn't yeah. it it's all about these short term uh, short term highs sure. it's uh, you know you were not really thinking about the long term and that's mm -hmm. why uh, drugs just become widespread because it seems like the only uh, <coughs> leisure activity that you could do that's easily accessible that's uh, that's just it's just easily accessible i think that's the main uh, factor for me okay so how do how do you think the youth how do, how do people access drugs in your opinion what have you heard or seen um uh, well i have seen a lot of stuff while i was in secondary school i'd say maybe obviously without mentioning names yes obviously without mentioning names um uh, so I have seen a lot of stuff and a lot of people getting involved in this and I, I'd say that it all begins with that one friend who has some, so, some sort of, uh, has, who has met um, not so met criminals in essence yeah, who have met criminals who are dealing these drugs mm. and that one friend is the, is the one who has access to all the drugs and everyone goes to this one friend this one person in the secondary school who has who's considered the most coolest person mm. and the, if you go to that person with a little bit of money they can supply you with as many drugs as you like and sometimes friends even pull together just to get um a one uh, just a one um Spliff, I think they call sure. it. One uh, cigarette stashed with marijuana. They get. Uh, I think they, all the friends pull together. Mm. There's a sense of unison, and they go to that one friend to pay the money, and they get their high in return. So tell, me, tell me, tell me this time here, yeah. Um, once again, without mentioning names, you're someone who's, you know, had your education in Tower Hamlets, okay, in London. Um, have you f had first-hand experience of people who have taken drugs that you've known? That I've known. That um, you've known. Either in your area or at school or college. Oh yes, um, definitely. I've had uh, many personal friends who have um, who had who had led a quiet life before g reaching like year nine, year ten, and year eleven, say, uh, and they uh, became very addicted to marijuana. But uh, and wow. this this sort of um, affected their education. It sort of led them to having a more relaxed approach to life. Relaxed as in don't need to worry about anything, even the important stuff. Let everything go, and their their health declined uh, as um, smoking uh, cigarettes, tobacco soon picked mm. up, and 
it's just like I said before, it's a slippery slope. Mm. Uh, I saw my friend go down. Because I speak to so many teachers who say that, you know, and it's a common kind of uh, phrase within the staff room amongst teachers that that student might be on drugs. Yeah. Because sometimes you're trying to get across to the child, you're trying to speak to them, trying to get them to yeah. understand the importance of studying. Sure. And it almost seems that this child is switched off, doesn't really care, and it's kind of almost almost mellowed out. Yeah, yeah? you can say that. Now. <sighs> So once again, we've spoken about, you know, how people might get lured into drugs and so forth. How do you think it impacts? How do you think, what kind of impact does it have on, say, the family of that child? Because, you know, there are families out there who are victims of this. And right. I can't, I can't uh, imagine what they're going through. And how, how do you think it imp uh, impacts the family? Well, in, in that case, there's two types of families, I would say. I would say the first type of family is oblivious to the fact that their son or daughter are taking drugs. So, Do you uh, think? Um, I think there are some cases where, uh, where sometimes the parents might think. I'm not saying it's the majority, but I'm sure, sure there are cases where the parents are just oblivious and not sure, have no idea what their ch children are getting up to. I think okay. that is the case. Maybe it's due to laziness. Maybe it's due to a, a work overworking, and they just don't have time to keep track of their children. Okay. And to, uh, for those parents, I'd say they, they need to really keep an eye. Uh, ask their children what they're up to, ask them what they're spending money on. And then you have the second type of parent where obviously they know what their children are going through and it must be a very um, a draining ordeal, like mm, I can only mm, imagine. Mm. And I would say that um, uh, I would say that they really need to, again, have this, the same approach with type, the type, first sure. type of parent. They need to sit down with their children, discuss it, uh, discuss what's going on, what's li causing them to go down this path. They mm. need to tell them uh, this is wrong, this is going to damage their education. They genuinely need to think about their future because all this, uh, guaranteed, they, ha they can have so much fun for the next year or so, for the next two years until the end of secondary school mm. or until the end of sixth form. They can have as much fun as they want. But mm. once they get to the real world, the parents need to make their children realise that what are you going to do for money? What are you going to do for mm. food, shelter? Mm. When I'm not here, when the parents yeah. are not here no more, they really need to. Parents need to have that sit down mm. with their children, have that conversation. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think the worry is obviously we've got parents watching at home, and they're probably just the thought of their child even considering it would uh, would really worry them. And yeah, I think like it's something parent. that exactly. And I don't think any parent would even want to consider or even think about th uh, th that concept of their child doing something like that. Now, in terms of the wider society, how do you think a youth taking drugs, how does it influence the wider society? Because say for example, if one youth does it, like you say, all it takes is one youth right. to be hooked on it. How do you think, what kind of bigger ripple effect do you think that has on our community? I think uh, the more a certain area or a certain borough, for example, to a hamlet, mm. becomes more associated with drugs. You, you have this kind of uh, this this kind of stuff gets reported in the media, in the in the mainstream media, mm. and you you kind of get the effect. And you could say you could say this about to hamlet now. We're not portrayed in the most best manner. We're portrayed as a mm. very um, uh, deprived borough, portrayed as a very uh, as a borough with high crime rates and uh, crime rates and so on. And so this kind of effect, knowing that you're living in a borough which has um, high crime rates, mm. high uh, um, the use of drugs is widespread. I think uh, you kind of get what is called like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm. Like the child will know that he's going to uh, grow up addicted to drugs. The child's going to know he's going to know that they're going to grow up with mm. bad access to, uh, with a limited access to education, with a limited access to jobs and whatsoever. And I think that again it contributes. It, it, the children grow up knowing that. Thi not knowing because it's not essentially mm. all the case but they will feel they will strongly feel that they will not achieve the best that they can mm. and this kind of puts them down on a level instead of reaching high they'll start aiming low and again it just sure. it's a slippery slope to drugs now what about people we talk about obviously the challenges that we have um do you think do you feel that uh it's become much more widespread so say for example from when you were at school or primary school growing up to now do you feel because I, I you know when I'm walking on the streets the number of times that I walk by a certain place uh, y you can smell drugs whether it be in a car coming out of someone's uh, window at home and it's quite worrying for me and it's it's become almost quite a common place where people are doing it and people some people are doing it quite openly yeah, definitely. Uh, what would you do? Do you agree with that? Uh, do you feel that? Yeah, that I, I do think people are doing it much more openly because uh, essentially, um, I think the, the main problem. If I, I could, I'll speak about this problem in relation to marijuana, as I think marijuana is the, is the biggest mm. um, uh, narco illegal narcotic out there. I think uh, the thing with the uh, drugs is the, uh, drugs like marijuana is that there's a myth spreading uh, that's being spread around that marijuana doesn't necessarily um, cause harmful effects to the body, mm. and I think that 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 alone, that myth alone, has 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 is uh, is the cause of. Drugs drugs becoming so widespread because people are thinking 
it's harmless. What's that's, the risk? That's probably being There's spread, no problem. Spread and that's why it's becoming, becoming more socially accepted. It's becoming more, in fact, it's becoming, uh, if you do it, it's, it's, a good, it's considered a good thing. It means mm. you're a relaxed person and so... Uh, it's I, probably like being uh, spread by a drug, drug dealer. Yeah, probably trying a drug dealer trying to spread get it. There, yeah, trying to get he was business successful, side. you could say that. Okay, but I think you're absolutely right. I think sometimes our students, and, and I was reading an article recently about, you know, spice one of the drugs that, that's been in the media very recently. And it, this is a type of uh, what they call a legitimate, okay, legal high. Legal high. Okay? And what the government are trying to do at the moment is they're trying to ban the term legal high because legal almost implies it has no negative impact on your health. Right. When we know there's no drugs that doesn't. Okay? And uh, I was uh, watching a, a news documentary recently and it was talking about how there are a lot of people, because there's that gap where people can actually take this and it's available um, that you know now that the government is looking in fact to ban it as of the 26th of May I believe there's a new act that is coming out which will ban the use of such uh, legal highs um, and it's the effect it will have on those people who are addicted to those type of legal highs Right. So I think it's, it's quite devastating because there are a lot of people and I think the worry is with a lot of these legal high um, uh, substances and uh, narcotics you've got the challenge where you don't know what kind of ingredients have been put into those, what right. kind of drugs, you know, what kind of chemicals have been mixed and, and as a result the impact that that then has on the health. So I think, um, I think what we will find is uh, because once again you were speaking about accessibility to drugs so because of these so-called legal highs Okay, some people assume that you know it's easy to access and stuff, but what will happen once they obviously stop doing that? Now, let's talk about in terms of solutions. How, what kind of, what, what do you think someone who say, if there's a viewer at home who's watching this and thinking, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Okay, I'll, for whatever reason, I've, I'm addicted. I can't talk about it. Who do I talk to? What would you say, uh, Tambi, if someone came to you and said, what do I do in that situation? How do you help them? Um, first port of call would always be, for me personally, it would be um, family. But some people, I, I can understand, that the, speaking to a family, like especially uh, a Muslim or Bengali family about drugs can be a very, very difficult. So maybe uh, speak to a friend, speak to a friend who's more academically inclined. Like the, speak to one of the uh, one of your friends who's uh, like considered a, a clever kid. One of mm. the because uh, uh, th as they have more of a focus on education. If, if you can't speak to him, then there's always teachers you can go to. Anything mm. you say to a teacher, um, you can uh, you can expect them in their in their um, professionalism to sure. be uh, to uh, keep it confidential. So you can speak to a teacher about it. There's so many people. In fact, there's a there's helplines such as t um, Frank. I think mm. it's Frank or mm. all you can mm. speak to. It's all conversations. Any conversations about drug addiction, no matter how, what illegal drug you've taken, they, they're always there to help and they always give the best advice. Thank and you. they're professionals in, in the drug support industry. But for me, as a, as a person to person, well, my personal advice to these people, I'd always say never, um, never ever neglect your education. Sure. Education is, is genuinely, I know it's such a cliche, but sure. ed education sure. is genuinely the key to your future. No, if, you, if you keep your education to a high standard, understand that will lead to. Um, and that would stop someone from if they were even considering it to actually stop there. Now, thank you, Tanvi. I think it's been really insightful having your take on this and I think getting the view of a, uh, a youth yourself and uh, some of the stuff that you've shared with us. Now, that's the end of the first segment. After we come back, we will be speaking to drug experts from NAFAS who will give us a more deeper insight into drugs. So please uh, do stay with us. <laughs> Oh, my God. 